live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. First night, the outgoing CEO of TT Line has sounded the alarm on the new Spirit of Tasmania full vessel, revealing it needs to leave Finland's waters in just weeks ahead of a harsh winter there. Harsh words too from the ferry operator's former chairman, slamming Tasports and the state government over the fiasco. An ousted chairman in the hot seat, Mike Granger launching a broadside against the government. I worked with six premiers and ten government ministers from both sides of parliament and have never witnessed such an appalling lack of support from government as experienced over the previous 12 months. Revealing TT Line warned then Minister Michael Ferguson for years about cost blowouts and delays to wharf infrastructure at Devonport. Mr Ferguson claims he didn't find out until after the state election had been called. As chairman of the board, I always kept our shareholder ministers informed of everything the board agreed or disagreed. Forced to resign after releasing a statement saying he would set the record straight, Mike Granger was not in a mood to mince words, pointing the finger at Tasports for major delays. I said, Minister, our single biggest risk in this whole project is Tasports and Berth 3. Warning Mr Ferguson last year, the new ships might have to be anchored in the River Derwent. Minister Ferguson replied that I needed to learn to play in the sand pit with Tasports. He has been aware of these issues for a very long time. He failed to do anything to resolve them. With no answer on when a temporary berth will be ready at Devonport, TT Line can't confirm when Spirit 4 will enter Tasmanian waters. But with winter approaching in Finland, the clock is ticking. But the ship is only built for certain ambient temperatures. So when the ambient temperature gets too low, you have the, the risk of freezing in pipes. Warning of yet another setback in our most expensive infrastructure project. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. The daughter of Hobart woman Rachel Wake, who was murdered by her former partner on Christmas Day three years ago, is calling for a complete overhaul of how triple zero calls are handled. Meeting with the police minister today, Romani is asking for changes to the way people in domestic violence situations can call authorities when it may be unsafe to talk on the phone. Police Minister Felix Ellis says there is work underway nationally to support people in difficult circumstances. Harness trainers Ben and Tim Yole have had their licences suspended more than a year after being named in the Murrahi Report on Racing Integrity. The Director of Racing moving to suspend both horse training and driving licences after considering responses to show cause notices issued to the pair last week. The decision will be revisited after the Independent Stewards Panel makes its determination on charges laid against them. Well, there has been a significant step forward in the case against the man accused of killing Cheyenne Lee Tatnell. The lawyer representing Christopher Mark Jordan will meet with the accused to discuss his defence before a preliminary proceedings application next month. The 37-year-old briefly appeared before a Launceston magistrate this afternoon with several members of Cheyenne's family there for the brief hearing. It's almost 15 months since the Bernie teenager's remains were found in bushland at Nabola. Tasmania's recent storms have revealed the remains of an ancient forest of trees on a north coast beach. The discovery provides a significant insight into what the area would have looked like thousands of years ago. Badger Beach with its natural beauty has been hiding a secret thousands of years old. Recent heavy storms which lashed the state stripped away the foreshore, revealing the remnants of an ancient forest which had been preserved under layers of sand. Sightseers today converging on the beach for a closer look. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I have lived here for quite some time, visited this beach, never knew that this was here. Fossil experts equally enchanted by what the storm unmasked. And what you have is you have the actual tree stumps sticking out of the ground where they were living tens of thousands of years ago. He believes they may be in a preserved state, which is an earlier stage in the fossilisation process and more useful for science. It's very, very rare that we can actually look at plants growing exactly where they are were then. The discovery also sparking interest within Tasmania's Aboriginal community. 
Well, potentially they are um, tea trees, probably around the 30 to 40,000 years ago. Um, extremely important in uh, Aboriginal culture. Uh, tea trees themselves are used as spear material um, and uh, a variation of tea trees, a paper bark, is used for making canoes. These ancient stumps are once again expected to be covered by the tide and incoming sands over the next few weeks. In the meantime, locals are enjoying the discovery on their beach. Yeah, so it's pretty cool to come and find. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. A pilot program aiming to bridge the gap for families in need of specialist care has been deemed a success. The Kids Care Clinic offers paediatric medical and short-term allied health care for Tasmanians experiencing social vulnerabilities and barriers to support. Because of the service, we were just put on the waiting list here instead of, and we got in straight away. There's more than um, uh, 1,500 uh, people that have been ben that have benefited 5,500 appointments just in the last 18 months. The clinics are held in 20 locations across the state. They've stood for decades, but now there are calls for the trees which line Salamanca Market to go. Stall holders say the London plane trees are dropping pollen, which could be irritating and potentially life-threatening for those with allergies and asthma. They may look harmless, but these tiny buds are causing havoc among Salamanca Market goers. So it's just these little pollen seeds, but as you can see, there's hundreds of them in there. Taking to social media, Stallholder Association President Emma Hope sharing the struggle of pollen seeds falling on her stall. If you don't pick them up straight away, they get stuck into the actual fabric and the wool. These trees, which are at least half a century old, are listed on Tasmania's National Trust. But Ms Hope says the pollen isn't just affecting trade, but becoming detrimental to people's health, potentially even life-threatening. So we get people from all walks of life and it actually is getting to the point where it's not safe for them. They haven't got clean air to breathe. A major talking point for those who enjoy them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I love them where they are. Well, what I really want for this park is, is for maybe for them to be gradually replaced with a, an Indigenous ecosystem. The association is calling for the trees to be phased out over the next couple of years and replaced with native ones. The Greens say that's not possible. When they say phased out, they mean cut them down, heritage trees um, that have, people have been enjoying and loving for generations. Hobart City Council, which is in charge of the trees, was contacted for comment. Well, I sympathise with people who do have allergies. Um, at, the end of the at the end of the day, they can choose not to come to the market during spring. No, I'd probably just say to take some hay fever medication. <laughs> and it would be really sad. I think it's what makes... Salamanca iconic. It's lovely to have had them, but I think that time is up. Lily Thompson, 7, Tasmania News. The LGH is a step closer to having a helipad again after a series of test flights. Air ambulance pilots performing landings, takeoffs, and flying various approach and departure routes to make sure everything is ready for the first patients. The new helipad mounted on the car park is coming at a cost of $16 million after the old one was deemed non-compliant by the aviation regulator. For older Tasmanians who've been considering taking up golf, this is your chance. Seven clubs, including Royal Hobart, Launceston and Olveston, are offering free lessons for seniors next week, the introductory clinics promoting the social and health benefits of the game. That age group is often it's people want to take up the game for the first time or they want to return to the game having played previously so this is a good opportunity to do just that. You've got nothing to lose, you've got the chance to become good at something, enjoy something, fresh air, a little bit of exercise and actually friendship. The Come and Try sessions coincide with Seniors Week which tees off on Monday. Visit golf.org.au to register. Future Jack Jumpers cheerleaders have been put through their paces in a first of its kind holiday camp. The tiny tumblers making the most of a chance to learn from and impress some of the best in the business. Fearless tricks, twists and boundless energy. 
As the next generation of Jackies, cheerleaders learn from their idols. They set up these really big mats and then we got to do flips and stuff. Junior jump Scott Hopefuls hitting the court in Moona, learning from Tazzy's very best for the team's first school holiday workshop. I want to be in the Solstice Jump Squad. It was a masterclass to remember, learning three dance, jazz and hip-hop routines in three hours. Having fun doing all the dances. The way that the younger kids dealt with how hard the choreo was was amazing. Like They just kept trying, persevering. Obviously, in dance, you're never going to get 100% right, so the ability to improvise and do what they did and just have fun is all it's about. Cheerleader Zali Kingston hopes to see the kids in the jump squad uniform one day. I would love to see a big group of young and old dancers dancing together. I think it's just a good vibe and would be awesome to show the crowd. This workshop isn't just giving young Tasmanians a taste of the cheerleading spirit, it's also teaching them teamwork and confidence, skills that last beyond the sideline. That's all I did when I grew up, especially during my like school holidays, during the summer, was every camp I could get to, I went to. Sarah Benalik, 7 Tasmania News. After much speculation, it's official. A familiar face is returning to the top job at Clarence Football Club. Incoming senior coach Grant Fagan says it was a conversation with a group of young roos over a coffee which got him over the line. Just how keen they were, how baby faced they were and how I, th I thought that I could actually you know, really give them a little bit of a, a kick along in their footy careers. Brother of Brisbane Lions Premiership coach Chris Fagans coached the Roos to three flags in the late 90s and in 2000. He'll be joined by former AFL stars Josh Green and Fa Fraser Turner, who will take on playing assistant roles. Tasmania has a mammoth run target to chase down on day two of their Sheffield Shield campaign. Things were looking promising for the Tigers with two early wickets before double centuries from the host set up a comfortable day. A short time ago at Stumps, Victoria was seven for 330. An action-packed start to the season opener. Tasmania winning the toss, sending Victoria into bat. The home side on the board early with a boundary off the second ball before Gay Bill came through with a first wicket on the third delivery of the day. Oh, he's bold! What a start to Tasmania! It wasn't long before Bill claimed a second inside five overs, sending Campbell Kellaway out for four. Oh, that's out. Inside edge onto the thigh-padded court. Victoria taking back control and dimming the Tigers' early glimmer of hope in reply, with a Marcus Harris masterclass putting them back in the game, the opening batter hitting a day one century. Marcus Harris starting a new cricket season with yet another 100. It's his 29th first class century. And then came more domination from the hosts. Peter Hanscom slipping through a boundary to reach his century. Peter Perfect. It's another century. It's his 26th. Jordan Silk giving the Tigers a late breakthrough, ending Harris's 143 run innings. Jordan Silk, with some of the safest hands in Australian cricket, takes a comfortable catch. They'd get three more wickets as the host dug in, leaving Tasmania plenty of work ahead of them tomorrow. Former Tasmanian Jack Jumper star Jack McVeigh has played his first NBA game, suiting up for the Houston Rockets in their clash with the Utah Jazz. The NBL championship hero notching eight points in eight minutes of court time. McVeigh's new team giving up a half-time lead, losing 113 to 122. Thankfully, it was just a pre-season game. Good evening. 15 in Hobart today, Launceston 16, 13 for Devonport and 14 recorded in Burnie. 16 at Friendly Beaches, Low Head, St Helens and Bushy Park also 15. 14 in Smithton, 13 the top for the islands and Grove. Strawn and Mariah Island both 12, remaining cool in Laiweni, just 7 degrees today. Mostly cloudy conditions were seen over the west central parts and the south, south of the state today. Thunderstorms are brewing over the Kimberley, central NT and about southeastern Queensland. Low cloud sits over coastal parts of Victoria, New South Wales and areas of Tasmania. Tomorrow a high will shift over southeastern New South Wales, extending a ridge to the southeast of the country. West to northwesterly winds increasing up to 30 knots about the west and east. West to southwesterly swells building up to 3 metres.
Now, there is a strong wind warning tomorrow for coastal waters between St Helens Point to Tasman Island and also between South East Cape around to Stanley. A frost warning has also been issued for the Midlands and Upper Derwent Valley. A fine and sunny day in the south tomorrow, Hobart, Jeeveston and Bothwell all 19. Partly cloudy in Launceston, 17. Fine in Devonport, 14. A sunny 17 degrees on the way for Cressy. Burnie sunny, 14. Mostly sunny in Strawn and Curry with 15 there. A bit of cloud in St Helens, 17. Fine in Swansea and Orford, sharing a top of 19 degrees. Thursday, fine after a morning frost in the east, extending to statewide showers, with snow falling to 800 metres. The frost continues towards the east on Friday. We can expect showers about the west, extending to the south, with snow again to 800 metres. And on Saturday, another morning frost, otherwise fine, apart from light showers about the west. We'll take a look now, now at the midweek conditions across the country. Warming up in Broome and Alice Springs, 37 degrees, 20 and cloudy in Sydney, 20 also for Melbourne, but fine and sunny. Currently cloudy in Hobart, 11 degrees, partly cloudy in Launceston, 13 and partly cloudy in Devonport with 12. Have a lovely night, Kim, and I'll see you again tomorrow night. Hey, thanks, Kai, you too. And that wraps up tonight's bulletin from the team here at Seven Tasmania. Thanks for joining us. For now, it's good night.